let's talk about the respiratory system. Um, as you can see, we're going to start up in the uh, nostril region and move our way down into the thoracic cavity. Uh, when we open up the neck region in the cervical area, we see this tube right here. It has cartilages, and this would be the trachea. That's number 16 on your list that you need to know. As the trachea moves on down the neck, we enter the thoracic cavity, and behind the heart, if you follow the pro, is lying on the trachea. It comes. It goes behind the heart. It, it, it goes behind the heart. heart, and you will see it's going to split so that we will have two bronchi, one to the right lungs and one to the left lung. Unfortunately, we are not going to remove the heart to show you that, so just know that there is a bifurcation behind the heart here. Um, then we will talk about the lungs. On the left side of the lungs, you see that the cat has three lobes. This on the left side would be the anterior lobe. Here we have the middle lobe and here we have the lateral lobe otherwise known as lobe number one number two and number three on the right side of the lungs we have four lobes this would be the anterior lobe then we have the middle lobe then we have the posterior lateral lobe and if you move the heart a little bit you will see another lobe hidden way back here and this will be the posterior medial lobe, otherwise known as lobe number one, lobe number two, number three, and number four. We also need to learn about pleural membranes. Uh, there are two pleural membranes you need to know, the parietal and the visceral. Parietal pleural membrane will be in the internal surface of the thoracic wall. So here is a transparent membrane that you are looking right through it to see the other uh, tissues underneath. But here, if a pin is found here, you will call this the parietal pleura. On the lung itself will be the other membranes that you need to know, and this would be the visceral pleura. Um, let's now go into the, the circular uh, system, circulatory system. And what we have, of course, you see the heart sitting in between the two lungs. Once upon a time, the heart was found inside this membrane called the pericardial sac. We open it up to show you the heart surface. Remember, this would be the right side of the heart, and this would be the left side of the heart. With that said, we have here the right atrium. Okay, that's the upper chamber, not very big. All of this side would be the right ventricle. On the other side, the left side of the heart, we have a little left atrium here. And then, of course, on this side would be the left ventricle. The great vessels that you see in this picture would be the aorta. Here we go, right here I'm pointing to, would be the aorta. And if you see how the aorta kind of curves up out of the, uh, the heart, it makes a U-turn to go down to the thoracic region. Of course, as we come in here, this would be the, the thoracic aorta. Can you see that? Okay. All right. Now let's go back and pick up the branches off of the aorta. So coming out, you have the aortic arch. The very first branch here would be the brachiocephalic artery. Brachiocephalic artery is found underneath this blue vein here. This vein, of course, will become the anterior vena cava. We want to preserve this, so we're just going to move it aside for now. As I move this aside, I hope you can appreciate from the brachiocephalic here, we have three branches. This very first branch would become the right subclavian. This branch here continues on up on the right side of the neck, and this becomes the right common carotid. And then the third branch here continues on the left side of the neck and become the left common carotid. Okay. Of course, the right is run out into the, uh, the axillary region and becomes the right axillary artery. And then it goes into the arm to become the right brachial artery. Let's move to the second branch off of the aorta. The second branch would be this branch right here. And this is the left subclavian artery. As we move on up the left subclavian, 
Okay. Now, as we continue on up, you notice how it will exit the chest cavity right here. And when it does that, we then change the name and we call it the left axillary artery. So I hope you can, can still see it's moving on out of the thoracic cavity, moving on out. And when it's up here, you will see a big branch. See that branch right here? This would be the subscapular artery because it goes right to the scapula, okay? And then the continuation of the axillary artery would be continue on out the arm. And uh, of course, at that point, it becomes the brachial artery. And you see it continue right here, okay? On out the arm. So that's pretty much the uh, major blood vessels in the neck and thoracic region. One more blood vessel I wanna point out is that uh, we mentioned the anterior vena cava. I also want you to see the posterior vena cava, and this one right here, okay, coming from the abdominal cavity going on up the diaphragm would be the posterior vena cava, and of course these, this will also empty into the right atrium. You may have remembered the azagous vein. That is found behind the right side of the lungs, so if I move this up a little bit, you see this vein right here. It's coming and it's going to join, it's going to empty into the anterior vena cava, but it's not the posterior vena cava. Okay, this is the azagous vein. And let's look at where it's coming from. If I push, can you guys, can you see this now? See the blue? Continue on down. That is the azagous vein. Okay, don't confuse that with the posterior vena cava. All right, that's it.